Mike Moore Media. I'm talking to Meg McGuire, Environmental Health Programs Coordinator with Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services. Meg, nice to have you in the program. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great. Well, we want to find out about what you do, but first, give us a little background on Meg McGuire and what, uh, how long you've been doing this, and are you from here, and, and things like that. Some background, Meg. Uh, yes, I grew up in Eden. Uh, I went to uh, Moorhead High School and then went to Rockingham County um, Community College and then finished up my four-year degree at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, but came back home, and uh, it was not my first job, but my second job right out of college. Uh, so I've been with the county for a little over 21 years now. Uh, I did start off doing septic systems and wells, um, but now I'm over the uh, food protection program. So I, I manage uh, doing the retail restaurant inspections, lodging inspections, uh, institution inspections like hospitals, nursing homes, the jail. Uh, public swimming pools, tattoos, and childhood lead investigations. Wow. That's a lot. You do a lot. We, we have a whole lot in environmental health. Uh, mm-hmm. I occasionally also help out with uh, rabies uh, investigations. We deal with uh, animal bites and uh, from either domestic animals or wild animals and uh, making sure that uh, animals that need to get tested to see if they have rabies or uh, following up with the communicable disease nurse to make sure that uh, people that were exposed that they're getting um, their post-exposure treatment. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot that goes on in environmental health. Um, my program itself, we do around 1,200 inspections a year. Wow. Uh, I have a staff of uh, three inspectors below me, and we we manage the program for the county. Yeah. Well, so uh, when we go in a restaurant and we see that um, that health grade there, that's that's probably your name signed on that, isn't it? Oh, me or one of my staff. Yeah. Um, I have uh, Melanie Clark. She's over Eden now. She's my newest inspector. Uh, Kristen Norwood. She's primarily Reedsville. And then I have Gabby Torjan. She's uh, the western side of the county. And uh, she's a great asset as well because she's fluent in Spanish, which is very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, I appreciate you giving us that overview. There's a lot involved in uh, in your department for sure. Uh, our daughter lives in Maryland. They have no health inspections there with restaurants and things like that. I've always thought that was interesting. But how important is that, uh, that, that you are in uh, these restaurants and food places uh, uh, on a regular basis and with that, uh, the work you do there? It's very important. Um, states that have adopted the FDA food code, which is a guidance document to try to encourage um, consistency between states for big franchises like McDonald's and Olive Garden, you know, going into different states, they want to have similar regulations. But uh, there's evidence that shows uh, that states that have adopted that food code, they have a lower incidence of foodborne illness outbreaks. Mm-hmm. And North Carolina has a very ru- robust uh, environmental health program. We, we've got one of the best programs in the country. Uh, we go into our establishments anywhere from two to four times a year, which is more than a lot of states. A lot of states may be going there once a year or once every two years. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still just a snapshot. We don't we don't move into these establishments. Uh, we go in. We're there usually anywhere from two to four hours, but that's only, like I said, two to four times a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but, but, but two to four times a year, and do you, is this a surprise visit when you go in a restaurant? Yes, they are unannounced inspections. Um, they know that there's like an inspection window depending on what their risk category is. So like a McDonald's is a risk category two because all their food is ready to cook. It comes out of a refrigerator or freezer, goes straight to the grill or fryer, and is served to the customer. And whatever's not served is disposed of where like a, a more local uh, establishment, a mom and pop, like a Dick's Drive-In or Railroad Cafe or uh, Sirloin House, places like that, they, they have a, a more complex menu, mm-hmm. and they're doing a lot of more food processes, like battering, um, they're cooking and cooling foods, and those will inspect four times a year. Um, and so each one of these risk categories has uh, an inspection window, like a, either a anywhere from a three-month window to a six-month window, and will come any time during that, that time period. Mm-hmm. So they don't know. It's not every three months or every six months. It's a truly randomized 
kind of whatever we feel like inspecting today, we go do. So they don't know that we're coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, if if you get, would you uh, go to some place if, if say somebody complains? You know, I was in this place yesterday, and I saw you know cockroaches or something. Do, do you answer uh, complaints from residents and respond that way as well? Yes, we do. We do complaint investigations, and there's an online uh, complaint form on the county website where they can submit complaints. Uh, we also monitor Facebook. Um, there's a couple websites that are Facebook pages that we follow and try to keep up with uh, any kind of serious complaint that we feel like we need to follow up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, th- this is very important that uh, those guidelines are in place for us as consumers when we're when we're going out to eat. Um, now, you mentioned right before we uh, started the program here uh, something about uh, illegal food. One of the things, and I thought, what is she talking about? What explain that? What What are you saying there, Meg? So, if you are buying food from someone. Uh, it should come from an inspected, regulated facility. It should be inspected by some kind of government agency to ensure that it's safe. Uh, If you're buying from someone who's making it in their house, you don't know the sanitary conditions of their house. You don't know if they maintain that food temperature. Is their refrigerator at the right temperature? Do they cook it to the right temperature? Do they have indoor pets? Like, do they have a cat that's crawling all over their counters? Mm. You know, how are they washing their hands? How are they packaging it? So there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So you want to make sure you're purchasing your food from uh, an establishment that has some sort of inspection. Uh, Restaurants fall under the local health department, but like baked goods, um, the ice cream shop in Eden, Delishy, those fall under the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Um, And then uh, facilities that make food and it crosses state lines, that's going to fall under a more federal uh, inspection program like USDA or FDA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, But... We have people that are making food in their home because they're trying to make some extra money. And, you know, they'll they'll go, um, as I was telling you before this, I had a complaint uh, just last week where uh, someone was selling food out of their car at Purina uh, to the employees there. Um, So we we go and we talk to them. We don't have the ability to fine, um, but we do talk to them, give them the guidance, uh, follow up with like a a notice that they uh, received by certified mail. And it's kind of an education. But if they then continue to sell food illegally, then we have legal routes because we'll go to the county attorney's office. And we don't like to do that. We like to, to educate people and try to get them in compliance as best we can. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. So is that, if you had to choose maybe a top three, one, two, three uh, problems or issues that you're dealing with currently, uh, would that be one of, would that be in the top three perhaps, illegal food? Yeah, illegal food is in the top three. Um, but we don't have a lot of problems. We've, we've been doing a lot of education here in the county. Mm-hmm. Uh, I apply for a lot of FDA grants, and so we are able to use that grant money to purchase a lot of educational material for our food establishments. Uh, we offer a lot of free training for food employees. I have a, a free training monthly uh, that anybody in the county can attend. It's a Surf Day Food Handler class. It's the third Thursday of the month. Um, But we'll also go to an establishment. If they have a lot of new employees or if they're having trouble on a health inspection, we don't want to come in there with a hammer, proverbial hammer, and and beat them down. We want to educate them. We want all of our places to succeed. Our main goal is to make sure that they're just serving safe food to the citizens of the county. And I know uh, a lot of chatter on Facebook, you know, they think that someone's got a low grade because they've got an old building or old equipment or they want to complain about the conditions of the dining room. Those aren't really things that we look at. Those aren't things that lead to foodborne illness. We're looking at hand washing and are they coming to work sick and are their refrigerators holding at the right temperature and are they cooking food um, to the right temperatures. And those are the things, the things that directly lead to a foodborne illness are what we are mostly concerned with. A lot of the other things we will general comment. They don't even typically lose points for, Mm -hmm. and any, anybody that's interested, we write up on an inspection report. Those are all public record. And there's a link on the County website where they can look at every inspection report. You know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, I have looked at that from time to time. So uh, everything is listed there in the inspections and the grades and the violations and and all of that. So if I wanted to check that out, 
where can I find that again? Because that, that really is kind of an educational thing for us as a, as a consumer, isn't it? It is. It's very important. Uh, I can tell you, as a health inspector, when I eat out at other restaurants, um, like I'm going out uh, for a friend's dinner tomorrow night in mm-hmm. Greensboro, and I've already looked up the inspection report at that mm-hmm. restaurant. Sure. Because okay. I like to know where I'm eating. Uh, but it's on the, the county website. Um, it's under the environmental health page, which is under health and human services. And on the left-hand side of that page, uh, you would just scroll down, and there's a, a tab that says inspection scores. Uh, that that is uh, interesting. That that uh, that's there for us to look at, and we can kind of see what's happening around the county. And not only restaurants we're talking about, but daycares and uh, cafeterias at school and uh, any, any place that serves food. Any place that serves food or any institutions, uh, the public swimming pools, all of those are public record. So the only thing that's not public record are rabies and the childhood lead because those are HIPAA protected. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now, you mentioned swimming pools. Um, the, before we know it, that season will be here. What, what, um, what do you have to do with swimming pools around the county? So public swimming pools, uh, what we define a public swimming pool, they could be at a country club, they could be at a hotel, they could be at an apartment complex. Um, they get inspections yearly. Their permit's good for one year. We go out, we check water quality. We want to make sure they're balancing the chemicals correctly. We want to make sure the... The pool itself, the clarity, they can see all the way down to the bottom um, to prevent any kind of drownings. Uh, we check they have to have specific drain covers because we don't want any uh, entrapments because there have been cases where people have gotten entrapped, their hair have gotten entrapped, or, you know, someone is playing around and kind of sits on the drain and the mm-hmm. suction is so strong it holds them down. Yeah. So it's uh, led to severe injuries or even uh, death. Um, we check the pumps. Uh, we want to make sure that the pumps are, are working correctly. The uh, filtration is. They have to have certain safety equipment there, uh, like a fence around the pool, a gate that's working correctly, a phone that can call 911, um, rescue equipment like a, um, a hook and a, um, a ring buoy. So those are things that we check. So we go out every year. Usually uh, all the pools want to be permitted sometime either at the end of April or beginning of May. Um, so we'll go out and we do an initial evaluation, and then we come back. Typically, if I fully stopped, it was not last year, so they only got one inspection last year. But typically, we come back again and do a surprise inspection. Mm-hmm. So everybody's going to be on their best behavior when they know we're coming. <laughs> yeah. We want to see how they're operating it when they don't know we're coming and making sure that that is still being maintained. Mm-hmm. And that is also something that uh, the public can call in complaints. If they've got complaints about you know, water quality or safety, um, that that is something we will investigate. Mm-hmm. Wow, uh, you mentioned uh, tattoo shops. Uh, what what do you do when you go in? And, what do you look for when you go into a tattoo shop? And we have a lot of them, don't we, in the county? Uh, we we have more and more, and uh, permanent makeup falls under tattoo shops because that is still uh, mm-hmm. inserting ink underneath the skin with a needle. Mm-hmm. Um, those permits are also good for one year. We go into the tattoo parlors. Uh, we just want to make sure they got clean sanitary facilities. They've got running water so they can wash their hands properly, um, that they're using uh, equipment that's either disposable or that they've got an approved autoclave, um, and that they're using proper disinfection for uh, not just their equipment but also for cleaning the tattoo site. And so that's that's a, a faster inspection. Um, it, it, there's not a whole, and that's interesting. Uh, North Carolina regulates tattoos here because uh, just across the border in Virginia, it falls under more like the Board of Cosmetology, and they get permits that allow them to move around, and they're good for so many years. Where in North Carolina, the permit is tied to the artist and the location. Mm-hmm. So if that tattoo artist changes locations, they have to get a new permit. So really, a little better level of uh, uh, consumer protection there. It sounds like. For building facilities, but not for quality. Mm, so I'll okay. have people get upset with us. I, I can't guarantee that they're going to give you a nice quality tattoo. Like, we don't require that they have any artistic ability. <laughs> Anybody can get yeah. a tattoo permit. Uh, so we're just checking to make sure that whatever tattoo they give you won't cause an infection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you, this is uh, interesting to just uh, hear some of the responsibilities you have uh, there at Department of Health and Human Services. Is there anything else uh, you'd like to mention before we wrap up, Meg? 
Uh, another complaint we get a lot of that we do not have any regulation over is uh, like mold growth mm. and uh, bed bugs. If they're not in a facility that we regulate, I have no authority to to make that like a, an apartment complex complaining of mold or bed bugs or someone renting a house with mold or bed bugs. I can give you some advice and guidance, um, but that that's more of a, a tenant kind of complaint. It's mm-hmm. a, a civil complaint, and so I, I can't do anything. But we do get a lot, a lot of complaints about people renting properties that have severe water damage and mildew, mold growth, or uh, facilities where an apartment complex, like the apartment next door, has a bed bug infestation, and they'll move. They'll spread to other apartments mm-hmm. if it's bad enough. Yeah. Um, so, and bed bugs are something that the public, they're not a, what we term a vector. They're not known to transmit any communicable diseases, but they're a, a horrible nuisance. Mm-hmm. And they're terrible to get rid of and can be very expensive to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. Well, our time is up. Uh, Meg, this has been uh, very uh, informative, and, and I've learned a lot, and I think we probably need to uh, talk from time to time and uh, find out more about what uh, what your department is involved in. So thank you for your time. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, for your over 20 years of service uh, here in Rockingham County and uh, all of the, uh, the things that you're involved in that uh, helps us as consumers. We appreciate that, too. Well, thank you. If I, any... I really enjoy my job. So, And it's a lot to do, it sounds like, for sure. Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, directly at the county, my office number is 336-342-8271. Okay. Meg, thanks again. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh, you have bye. a good day. You That's too. Good. All right. Bye. That's Meg McGuire, Environmental Health Programs Coordinator with Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, lots of things involved in that department. Again, uh, for more information, uh, she just gave you her direct number if you need to get in touch with her, 336-342-8271. The Facebook page, Rockingham County Department of Health and Human Services.